today. Let us take some time to study the Word of God together with the sermon titled, The Gift That Pleases God. Everyone, by any chance, do you know what pleases your parents the most? When people ask their parents on Parents' Day, what kind of gift would you like me to give you? The majority of parents jokingly respond, a monetary gift is better than any gift. Even though parents say it as a joke, their answer may seem practical in a physical sense. However, the truth is that the greatest gift for parents are their children. Your birth is the greatest gift for me. Deep in the hearts of all parents, they always have this kind of feeling towards their children when they look at them. I think the hearts of our heavenly parents would not be much different from the hearts of our physical parents. Then what is the gift that pleases God the most? Everyone, we should take a moment to think about this, shouldn't we? Some people think, should I give flowers to my parents? Or should I give them a cake? Or should I give them nice clothes? I heard that many people ponder over what to give their parents. Materialistic things are important. However, I think parents would be more pleased with love that the children have towards their parents, thinking of them rather than materialistic things. Children should call their parents often to see how they are and how their health is. Actually, many experts recommend that children should say, I miss you and I love you to their parents a lot. I love you and I miss you a lot. They say that saying these words often is what parents are pleased with both mentally and emotionally. For those of you whose parents have been taken up to God's side, don't we have our spiritual father and mother? I ask you to be comforted in your hearts, knowing that we have our heavenly parents. Today, with the sermon titled, The Gift That Pleases God, let us open the Bible. What is it that pleases God the Father and God the Mother? Let us take a look at Ephesians chapter 5. Let us take a look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. In chapter 5, verse 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. What will please God? We must find the answer and confirm this through the Bible. Find out what pleases God. Doesn't this mean we should make an effort to understand what it is? Then what should we, the children, have in order to please God? Let us take a look at God's true heart through what is written in Hebrews chapter 11 in the Bible. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. When we take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith, it is, what is it? Impossible to please God. Eventually, don't we come to think, no matter what we do, we should do it with faith that is able to please our heavenly parents. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, doesn't this mean that when God looks at his children who have faith, he is always pleased with them? Let us turn to Luke chapter 15. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 15, verse 1. In Luke 15, verse 1, it says, Now the tax collectors and sinners 
were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. At this moment, we can see the scene where God is very pleased. The Bible says, God is most pleased when one sinner who has been lost repents and returns to God. In this parable, Jesus compared the heart of a shepherd who finds his one lost sheep to the joy that pleases God when one sinner is found. Let us take a look at verse 8. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Just as it is written here, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. God will be more pleased with our repentance. Through the words written in the book of Luke, the words written in the book of Ephesians, and the words written in Hebrews chapter 11, what is it that pleases God? We should think about what kind of gifts we may offer to God in order to please Him, shouldn't we? Let me give you some hints. Let us turn to Proverbs chapter 11. We should not give our parents just any gift without knowing what our parents like or what they are pleased with. We should know what they like and what pleases them the most. Let us take a look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20. The Lord detests men of perverse heart, but he, what does God do? Delights in those whose ways are blameless. God is pleased with those who have faith. He is pleased with those whose ways are blameless. He is pleased with the lost sinners when they repent and return to Him. Through the Bible, God is letting us know these three things that please Him. Let me give you one more hint. What pleases our heavenly parents? Let us turn to Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's take a look at Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. In chapter 9, verse 23, it says, This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. God says, Let not the rich man boast of his riches, or the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, meaning God and that God exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. God says, for in these I delight. God is pleased with the repentance of sinners, with those who have faith, with those whose ways are blameless, and with those who boast about God. When we take a close look at these, they all come to the same conclusion. How can all these things be accomplished? What should we do? 
What should we do to make the lost sinners repent? We should preach. It is written in the Bible that God is pleased with those who have faith. Can preaching be accomplished without faith? When we preach the gospel to all nations, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, we can accomplish this gospel work. Furthermore, the Bible says God is pleased with those whose ways are blameless. Think about every process of preaching the gospel. Can we preach the gospel by doing ungracious deeds? All those who preach the gospel should set an example for others with their words and deeds. Since our words and deeds are directly related to shining the glory of God, we cannot help but be blameless in our words and in our deeds. The Bible also says that God is pleased with those who boast about God. Again, preaching is the way to boast about God. By looking at each of these four cases, we can come to realize what pleases God the most. What is the gift that we can give to God to please Him the most? It is to go out and preach this gospel to all peoples and to all nations of the world. Carrying out this mission of preaching the gospel is the way for us to accomplish all things that please God. Finding our lost brothers and sisters and leading sinners to repentance through preaching is what pleases God the most. For this reason, when God came to this earth in the flesh 2,000 years ago, He left this message as He ascended to heaven. You should be the ones who please God. It is because we are the souls that committed sin in heaven and were cast down to the earth. We were destined to die forever. To us, who were in a position where we had no choice but to die, God came to this earth to open the way for us to live. He shed His blood on the cross for our sins and became the sacrifice of atonement. In this way, He redeemed us from all our sins and transgressions and liberated us, didn't He? After doing this, He left a message for His children asking them, be the children of God who please Him. Be the children of God who can give to God the gift that pleases Him the most. Let us confirm this through the scene recorded in Matthew chapter 28. Let us take a look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. In Matthew 28, verse 18, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the last commission that Jesus gave in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything God has commanded you. For this last commission to be completed, what should we do? We must preach the gospel to people of all nations in order to fulfill this commission. Isn't this what Jesus meant in his request? If we look at this verse closely, it means that when we return to heaven, do not just come empty-handed. Instead, each one of us should bring one good gift to God who has forgiven our sins. What is this good gift? Lead sinners to repentance and come to the kingdom of heaven together. This is the meaning contained in his request. God does not tell us to only go to certain places to preach the gospel. Where does God tell us to go? He tells us to go to all nations. God tells us to go to all peoples of the world and preach the gospel of life to them, letting them know that the kingdom of heaven exists and that God exists and that we are angels who are cast down to this earth from the eternal kingdom of heaven. God tells us to let them know that when all life on this earth is over, 
the place we will return to is our eternal home in heaven. Life on this earth is not easy. Sometimes it is difficult. Sometimes it is troublesome. There are various diseases and financial problems. Although each individual experiences many difficulties, God tells us not to forget that we have an eternal home to return to and to endure such lives for a little while on this earth. We should not live our life on this earth meaninglessly. We should correctly understand and recognize this great will of God so that we may know why we are on this earth and what we should live for while here. Jesus also told us to express our gratitude when we return to our heavenly parents who have forgiven us of our grievous sins. How should we express our gratitude? We should express our gratitude by doing what pleases God the most. The repentance of sinners who are lost from heaven is what pleases God the most. Doesn't the Bible say there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent? This is what pleases God. We should be able to take with us what pleases God the most. We should be able to gather the repentant hearts of sinners and take them to our eternal heavenly home. This is the last and greatest mission on this earth that Jesus left to those who believe in God before he went up to heaven. Therefore, in the 66 books of the Bible, it is written, always diligently preach the word of the gospel in season and out of season. When you return to the kingdom of heaven, this will result in bringing the greatest gift to God. Isn't this the meaning of these words? Let us turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let us take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. In chapter 4, verse 1, it says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. What does God tell us to do? In view of the kingdom of God that will be revealed before us, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Once we recognize and believe that we are angels who committed sin in heaven and were cast down to this earth, we should help everyone on earth to repent one by one through the gospel. In this way, everyone on earth can return to God and be born again. We must teach them and guide them like this. Isn't it possible to do all these things through the word of God and through preaching? It is also written in the Bible that this is what pleases God the most. Let's continue with verse 2. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. What is the purpose of our life on this earth? What is the meaning of our life and the duty that we must fulfill in our lifetime? Isn't it to guide the lost souls to return back into the arms of God? God wants us to lead sinners to repentance and to save them. When we take a look at the books of Luke chapter 15, Hebrews chapter 11, Proverbs chapter 11, and Jeremiah chapter 9 that we read earlier, everything is centered on the work of preaching the gospel. Everyone, a gift that is meaningless to your parents cannot be regarded as a gift. Shouldn't we be able to have the wisdom and common sense to at least think about what our parents like 
when preparing a gift for them. God clearly lets us know through the Bible about everything that pleases Him the most. We must not turn a blind eye to this matter. Instead, let us make every effort to preach the gospel even in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's see 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. In chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Who wants all men. What does God want? He wants all men to be saved. God wants all men to be saved, leaving no one behind. And what else does God want us to do? To come to a knowledge of the truth. If this is what pleases God, let us diligently study the words of the Bible thinking. How can I save even one more soul? Let us make every effort to examine our character and reflect upon ourselves. In the Bible, God says, I want all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Then, how can they come to salvation through the truth that God has given to us if no one teaches them? Someone must teach them the truth. Someone must deliver it to them. That is why God emphasizes in the books of the gospel that he is much more pleased with one sinner on this earth who repents and returns to God's side than 99 righteous persons. Let us continue with Matthew chapter 24. Will this gospel continue to be preached for a long time without ever coming to an end? No, not at all. God's amazing work will be revealed when this gospel has been made known to all nations in the world. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. In chapter 24, verse 13, it says, But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Once this gospel is preached to all nations, then God will declare that the opportunity to repent on the earth has come to an end. This day will surely come. Let us turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 to see what will take place on that day. Let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. In chapter 4, verse 14, it says, We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you, that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. Soon, the gospel will be preached to the whole world, and all the ages that God prophesied will come to an end. At that time, The Lord will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Although we want to present something as a gift to God, it is God who has prepared this glorious last moment for us. Do you think our small gift can be regarded as something great in the whole universe? Can it be something with great value? However, God is pleased with our gift 
and accepts even the smallest thing regarding it as something great. Everyone, there were pictures of the universe on our church calendar. Each month from January to December displayed a picture of the universe, didn't it? I always come to think, how does the earth we live on look in the universe? It really looks like a grain of wheat. When the earth is compared to countless other stars, it is so small that we cannot even see its existence. When we look at the whole universe, no matter what we do, and no matter how righteous we are, our actions are nothing in the eyes of God. God is pleased with the sincere heart and efforts of His children who are making such great effort thinking, since God is pleased with these things, let us prepare these spiritual gifts. It does not matter if you buy your parents clothes, give them flowers, or give them a monetary gift. Parents are not pleased with that alone. Don't you agree? Aren't they pleased with your gratitude and sincere heart to prepare those gifts? It is the same with our God. God governs the whole universe and regards the earth as a drop in a bucket and as dust on the scales. Even if we give everything on this earth to God, what would that mean to Him? God created this earth and there are hundreds of millions of stars in the universe. Then what on this earth could possibly please God? Through this sermon today and through the Bible that was written by people who were carried along by the Holy Spirit, we have come to realize the following. Father is pleased with this. Heavenly Mother is pleased with this. God is most pleased when we work diligently for the gospel to lead sinners to repentance and to save them. As we come to know this, let us prepare this gift by being the ones that please God before we go to heaven. When we testify about the word of God to each soul, bring them back from the dead and save them, there will be a feast in heaven every day with great joy over one soul who repents than over 99 righteous persons. Shouldn't we all go to heaven keeping this in mind? Once we are born on this earth, the time surely comes when we will return to the kingdom of heaven. However, let us not go back to heaven empty-handed. I hope we will be able to go to heaven holding an armful of beautiful gifts that pleases God. Let's look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. In chapter 12, verse 1, it says, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Those who lead many to righteousness. In other words, those who lead many into the truth, those who lead many to repentance, and those who guide many to return to God's side will shine like the stars in heaven forever and ever. With the gift of bringing many to righteousness, let us prepare diligently, running toward the kingdom of heaven and toward that glorious day when we will meet God. By this, I would like to conclude this sermon. Thank you very much.